Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of The Nonprofits, the show where we discuss news and topics of the day from a skeptical humanist perspective. My name is Cynthia, and today's topics are about a pope, a lawsuit, another lawsuit, and a renaming of a boat <laughs> in more words than one. But I'm not talking about this alone. I have a great set of hosts talking it with me, talking about it with me. Man. So let's go ahead and get them introductions. <laughs> yes. <laughs> introductions. Yes. <laughs> and all the way to my farthest left. Let's go ahead and start with Kelly. Kelly, how you doing? I'm doing great, Cynthia. <laughs> <laughs> really awesome and thanks for the great laugh i'm it's good to see that other people get tongue-tied while they're conducting too uh, so. you know, <laughs> so you know yeah. yeah i i i own my flurbs i do <laughs> i do I, I say it brings color to the show yes it does <laughs> well it's good to see you and thank you for joining us today next in line we have jason friedman jason how you doing love Hey, Cynthia, it's really good to be on here with you again. Uh, my, my whole goal this episode is to uh, break you again. And I just want to get you laughing so hard you can't even move forward. But it looks like you're doing it to yourself already. So, I mean, I can just sit back and chill. I was about to say, I could do that to myself. <laughs> but, uh... <laughs> so that's okay. I'm, I'm glad that you have uh, decided to, uh, to contribute to my... Important. Yeah, you know, it's nothing wrong yeah. with having goals. Everybody no. should have goals. And if part of that is tripping me up, touche. Thank you. And last but not least, we are also introducing our special guest host today, the Valiant Heathen. Hello, how are you? Hello, I'm doing fantastic. Real happy to be here with you guys today. Oh, goodness. I'm so glad that you have joined us. Before we get started, do you mind just telling us a little bit about yourself? Uh, sure. So uh, I hail from the frigid north up here in New York State. Um, I was raised an evangelical Christian and just spent a lot of my time in, in that sort of uh, growing up in that um, basically for the first you know 18 years of my life. And then I kind of started exploring philosophy and getting to know myself a little bit better after that. And uh, been a fan of the ACA for about 10 years watching your shows and um just really excited to be here as a host on one of these shows for the first time. This is this is really cool. <laughs> awesome cool. sauce. We are so happy to have you, VH. Not to be misconstrued with VHS, which is a system that no one uses any longer. Um, but no, it's not. They they really don't. You know. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say like you know you can uh, you can tell you you probably were like you know. Um, a worship leader because I see like the guitar in the background. I have <laughs> visions of intervarsity Christian fellowship in my head. Oh, my it, father definitely was. <laughs> oh, uh, wow. Uh, uh, okay. We are not going to sing Open the Eyes of Our Heart Lord. Okay. Oh my God. I remember that whole song. It just started going. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I could play it right now. I've got I've got I, an yeah, acoustic. We'll not, do a jam. Let, I, I just in G, you know that. Yeah, I you know we can probably please not. I didn't, I didn't even realize they still there's lyrics up here. <laughs> yeah, 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 it's yeah, going right. now, isn't it? Yeah, yeah it is. You just can't get it out of your head. It's yeah. just like a bad tune that just will just oh. plays over and over. But we're God gonna move it, on Cynthia. because I don't want to trigger anybody because I just triggered myself. <laughs> and I'm gonna say this show is a product of the Atheist Community of Austin, a 501c3 nonprofit organization dedicated to promoting of atheism critical thinking, secular humanism, and the separation of religion and government. And today, we're going to talk about a few things. First up is a Pope Watch. And the Pope thinks that gender ideology is ideological colonization. My question to Pope Frankie is, how sway? Second up, we're going to go to Texas, mm. where they say, thank you for being a friend. Here's a lawsuit. And then we're going to move on to the South and South, I believe South Carolina, where we explore the whole don't walk to class and not say the pledge. And then after that, we're going to round it up with a step in the right direction where a freedman 
gets his proper recognition. And as with all of our shows, links to today's topics and the news we discuss are available in the description below. And a reminder that if you want to come into the show per pod, you can check out the nonprofit's Facebook fan page every Friday night for a list of the articles ahead of time. And with that, let's move into segment numero uno. And Kelly, you're going to take us into a Pope Watch. I am. Um, this is a story from the Catholic News Agency. It was written by Courtney Mares on March 11th this year. Um, and Pope Francis, in an interview, said that gender ideology is one of the most dangerous ideological colonizations today because it is one of the most, uh, uh, excuse me, because it blurs the differences and the value of men and women. All humanity is the tension of differences. It is to grow through the tension of differences. The question of gender is diluting the differences and making the world the same, all dull, all alike. And that is contrary to the human vocation. Well, personally, I've never seen anybody in the LGBTQ community being really all that dull, but I'd like to hear what everybody else has to say on it. You know, um, Jason, a, you want to go take it away? I was going to say, being a member of that community, um, I, I, the thing, I, I just, I don't understand what gives him any authority to speak on these matters. It's, I, I just, I need someone to please tell me why I should care what the Catholic Church has to say about sexuality of all things. This is the same organization that spearheaded campaigns like the Ludon affair in which a convent of Ursuline uh, nuns said they had been visited and possessed by demons. Following an investigation by the church, a local priest named Urbain uh, Grandier was accused of summoning evil spirits. He was eventually convicted of crimes of sorcery and burned at the stake. The only thing that he was guilty of was going there and sleeping with the nuns. I mean, th this this is what happens. It's it's I, I think what's what's atrocious uh, is that this new campaign has empirically shown to cause harm teaching abstinence and dissuading people from using contraceptives and has been shown to be correlated with an increase of teen pregnancy stds pregnancy out of wedlock long-term relationships we see any type of gender dis disaffirmation leads to uh, god the last one that i read in one of my note in one of my books it was an 800 percent increase in suicidality when somebody, adolescents between the ages of 13 and 17, are, uh, they're not allowed gender affirming care. I, I think it's, I, I think it's really appalling that these people say that they're concerned about well being and really everything they do works against it, it seems. Uh, I'd really like to hear what, uh, what VH has to say about this. Uh, you, do you have so, any ideas? Okay, cool. Go for it. Absolutely. Absolutely. So sort of piggyback off of what you were saying, um, this is, seems to be uh, one of those in a very long line of we have people that are unqualified, that don't know what they're talking about, mm. that are just coming out and making these absolutist statements and, and kind of it, it really bugs me. Um, because honestly, I mean, when you look at what the Pope is supposed to be doing, his entire job, he's the mouthpiece of God here on earth. He's supposed to be interpreting the Bible and the uh, that's really the only thing that we should even take seriously from him. And then to hear him come out and make these statements that absolutely ignore, like you were saying, things that doctors and psychologists and therapists have been saying for decades, people that have studied this for their entire lives, and they really know what they're talking about. And it's, mm -hmm. it's evidence-based and it, it's all backed up. Instead, we have this old guy in a dress who doesn't know what he's talking about, just telling us what we should or should not be. Uh, be doing as far as a society. Um, and additionally, it's kind of crazy to me also that the, the, the Pope always seems to say something that contradicts what came before as a previous Pope. Uh, it always seems to sort, sort of more, more align with where we're going as a society. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Almost really like does. it's not coming from any divine source. He considers himself a divine, a divine source, actually. See, um, that's what, and and you know, as far as like the old man in the dress, I mean, like he's not even showing any leg or anything. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> not even a sexy dress. Nah, <laughs> no, it's, it's a frumpy. Slit. It's pretty frumpy. Yeah, no slit. It's not even got the matching hat, hat though. 
<laughs> yeah, this is true. And he does accessorize it really well with that jewelry. Let me tell you. But you know, I so you know, we we got like some uh folks who dabbled in a little uh philosophy and philosophizing uh, yeah. up, up in here, up in here. And you know, I I feel um that I'm I'm sensing a little logical some logical fallacies going along with his statement. Anybody want to take a stab at it? I know VH, you you said you dabble, dibble dabbled in a little of uh, uh, philosophican. So I mean, like, I wonder, like, if you can um, maybe, like, you know, help us out by point out a few, if you don't mind. I could definitely try. It's been a while since I uh, took any official anything <laughs> in <laughs> philosophy. But oh shoot, I don't put you on. <laughs> put <laughs> you, you, you really on did. Like... You really did. Uh... <laughs> Good. I really off the top of my head can't think of anything. I'm just going to end up sticking staring right back to where I was. And that is that it's, uh, it's somebody that doesn't have any, any training. They don't have any qualifications in this area to be speaking on this. Yeah. Well, you know, I, I would have to say with that being said, I, I think that what one of the things that I saw was, was an argument from authority yeah. um, just because he is a Pope. Um, you know, he actually is uh, coming up with this particular definition of what, what was it called again? Um, ideological ideological colon colonization. colonization. Yeah. You, you know, and it, which is so weird to me um, that the pontiff of the Catholic Church is talking about gender affirming care and gender ideology, just talking about anything and absolutely calling it ideological colonization. Um, I, I, I want to ask the Pope, are you aware of your history? Just saying. Yeah, you know, right? <laughs> you know, but um, and, and calling it the most dangerous thing on the face of the earth. I I am I'm so I, I'm so confused about calling something like that that. I mean, and, and yeah, it it's it's so weird to me, only because like with the Catholic Church's really funky history of colonization mm. itself <laughs> and and also uh proselyte uh proselytizing and 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 even um indoctrination and and child abuse and um and stealing money and uh slavery and um uh, oh yeah i'm sorry this is not that show or maybe it is but you know absolutely calling a person or calling this particular ideology to say that i want to identify myself as a fill in the blank because in my head that's what I am and he coming from an institution that is all about that colonization mm -hmm. saying no you're practicing colonization I mean that's I don't know Kelly help me uh what when you when you hear that what what comes to your mind I you know I I have a lot of mixed emotions about the Pope on it, or not emotions but thoughts about the Pope on this one I we've covered other stories about him talking about people in the LGBTQ community before and one week he'll say something very accepting like that like we need to accept the gay people we need to accept the uh, people from this community but we don't want to make them complete members of our church but mm -hmm. we need to treat them like people Mm -hmm. And and I get confused about what message he's trying to say. You know, I don't know. I don't know if he if it's he's confused. Is it that God's confused that he is the mouthpiece for God on earth? Right. So is he just com communicating God's own confusion? Can can God even be confused if God created these people? Why why would he confuse that they turned out the way they are? I see, I'm totally confused by this <laughs> completely. I don't get it at all. And I don't see why uh he has to keep coming out and saying some of these really, I mean, like this is yeah. probably the most bigoted thing I've ever heard him say. Yeah, and no joke. He, yes, yes, it is. It's very bigoted. I didn't re believe it either, but yes, the Pope is actually a bigot, and he's another one that's hiding behind his religion. See, the duck agrees with me, too. <laughs> I also think it's very deliberate. If you look at the, the usage, usually, when it comes to, like, the term even of gender ideology and like, uh, gender colonization or whatever it is that he said, uh, it's usually used. It's, it's, a, it's a way for him, I think, to take ownership of these uh, strictly traditional, like, attitudes and values of, of men and women and, and 
uh, gender roles and that kind of thing. Um, so in saying what he said, he's actually doing exactly what he's accusing everyone else of doing. Yeah. Well, I, I don't even understand where he, I mean, this is a, a celibate uh, male, right? This is a celibate male who thinks he has a say in LGBTQ plus affairs. And I, I don't understand like what gives him the authority. The whole, the whole fucking thing is full of non sequiturs. And it's just like, well, this because of this and this, and they're just going to do this. And they're, they're took our jobs, you know? And it's just like, that's, that's that whole little rant. He said, it's like, you're, they're playing, he's playing to his audience. That's all it really seems. There, there's nothing there. There's nothing substantive. And all it does is what Kelly was saying. It backs up bigotry, being, mm -hmm. being a queer, being an openly queer man with an openly queer daughter in the state of Texas, all this serves to do is to confirm people's terrible biases and well the pope said it you know and he's a mouthpiece of god you know you uh, you you're, you're you know you and your queer blah 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 this that. you know it's it just fuels that fucking fire one it's just another stoke to the flame i i don't know it's it really it really messes me up cynthia you, you look like you want to say something about this you know i was gonna you know implore some dog whistling but the the duck will probably say no yeah. what, what about some duck quacking um <laughs> but but you know i wanted to explore this whole idea of ideological colonization oh, i know that on. when i was preparing my notes i had to say that a few times just to make sure that i did not mess that particular phrase up when i got on besides it doesn't matter because i messed up all the phrases when we first started mm -hmm. but you know i i picked a couple of um articles uh one from um glad.org and i also got one from cbc uh, CBCP News. Um, but the first one I wanted to uh, talk about is the CBCP News because it does have a definition of ideological colonization as the imposition of beliefs and ideologies usually coming from the West. These beliefs and outlooks are presented as progress and they are imposed on other countries, oh. cultures, and religions in the name of development and you know i i i'm, I'm like what and the <laughs> reason being is because like when you specifically look at gender identity and gender ideology and um and even the conversation around you know people who want to claim their genders for themselves as a, as a means of autonomy Mm -hmm. Um, and especially when you're looking at the West, well, especially when you're looking at here, we already have a problem when it comes to how trans people are viewed. We, including laws, uh, like in your backyard, Jason, oh, um, man, come on, <laughs> you know, that there's a few last time I checked. And, you know, they, a lot of them are in the South and, and even like with some people who are even saying that, you know, your sex and the gender of you are supposed to be aligned, which if they actually picked up a science book, know that gender is social yeah. and sex is biological. They are mm -hmm. two different things. So... I don't understand how they could say that these particular beliefs from the West are imposed on anybody when we have laws that actually show the opposite. So are we looking at a, um, uh, a misnomer when it comes yeah. to what they feel that ideological colonization is versus how it's played out, Jason? You, well, you it, wanna, fe it feels like ahead? a game of, yeah, it feels like a game of projection. You know, mm. it's like everybody always gets mad about the things that they hate most about themselves that are, that are the most obvious problems about them. I, I forget who brought it up, but it's talk about colonization and taking over people. The, the Catholic Church, like they wrote the book, like they, they show you how to do it. You know, oh, yeah, your gods. Those are our gods. You just have different names. Oh, you don't want to do that. You're dead. You know, we're going to pull out your toes and, you know. It, it, it's just terrible, you know, but it's, oh, it's all in the name of love. I, I, I just think, I think it's atrocious. You know, I looked into the, uh, uh, where you're talking about the ideological colonization and Pope Francis has frequently used a term throughout the 10 years of his pontificate, 
particularly to describe instances when aid money for developing countries has been tied to contraceptives, abortion, sterilization, and gender ideologies. Uh, when the interviewer asked uh, Francis if he knew that in Argentina, people are asked to indicate on official forms if they are male, female, or non-binary, the Pope said it reminded him of the futuristic novel uh, Lord of the World, which was uh, written by uh, Benson in 1907. 1907. That, I'm sorry. Yeah. I have to get yeah. That out. <laughs> he said that the book uh, presents the idea of a quote future in which differences are disappearing and everything is the same. Everything is uniform. A single leader of the whole world, which to me is, is that's projection because that is what they want. He is that single leader of the, of the combined big brother world i mean it's it disgusts me i don't know what what's it i'm sorry i Take i'm it. sorry i'm i'm, I'm going to Take say it. this and then i'm going to Take throw it. this out to everybody because like when i read that part in the article i said you're really taking mm -hmm. a point from a book that was written and published in 1907 i mean it's it's, it's so silly and <laughs> and the way and the way he's not even seeing that he's talking about himself i mean they're the ones that want conformity and uniformity and ritual and do the same as us read the fucking book blah 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 it's like no i want to be actually different and unique and if i'm gender fluid if i'm this if i want to have sex with this person and that person or sex with nobody that's on me man and that's my mm -hmm. shit and i'm gonna roll with it I, I don't know it's it's to me it's just it's projection and it's disgusting you know you it's, know um I, I was going to say, uh, Valiant, you look like that you have like some thoughts swirling yeah, in your head. I was please, see, yeah. please share. As, please. as he started, as you started <laughs> talking about this book here written in 1907, the irony kind of really like stuck out to me. Uh, he's trying to compare today where we're al allowing people to express themselves and yeah, celebrating their differences more and more and more mm -hmm. uh, with a book that was written about the exact opposite. Yeah. Yeah. It blows my mind. About confining people and I just, I, I don't, uh, the cognitive dissonance is insane. Yeah. I mean, it feels, it's maddening. It's, it's just, you're watching here and you're just, I, I just, I remember at the earliest age thinking, I'm like, what is going on here? And the answer told me, oh, well, you know, everything's evil and the devil and this, that. It's like, no, no. After I realized that wasn't real, I'm like, no, no, there's something going on. And you said that dissonance that they're so entrenched in this just shit that that they it seems so obvious and once you like get out of the matrix or whatever but it's it's it seems so obvious but it's not and i mean and there's a lot of reasons i guess why it's not either either you believe it you're afraid it's safer to be in the masses i don't know i, I don't know how you feel about that but it's it's really it terrifies me especially i mean my daughter already just recently came out and has to deal with issues with her sexuality and one of her friends is non-binary and they're at fifth grade. People are already calling them disgusting and telling them they're gross and having to have meetings with teachers. And it's just, it's terrifying, you know, that this guy with the amount of authority that he has is allowed to even effing say these things. And it, and it sickens me. What do you think about this, Kelly? You look like you have some thoughts. Yeah, man. real quick. Um, I just want, I would just was thinking that doesn't the Catholic church already have enough controversies without the Pope making more, yeah. right? Or is that maybe the plan here, right? Just think, just listen. Did you hear what the Pope just said about trans people? And then you start thinking, you stop thinking about all the sexual abuse scandals, right? Is that maybe that's the game plan? Maybe that's the whole point, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah, you're right. He's supposed to think it too. Yeah. This guy. Yeah. Yeah. You, you know. Yeah, bigotry duck. I agree. Yeah. Um, bigotry if, duck's if, pretty smart. You know, I, I agree. I, and you know, if it quacks like a duck, hey, then it's then yeah, it's bigotry. But you know, um, before we uh, move on, I I just wanted to say one thing. Pope Frankie, you're full of shit. Yeah. Um, with that being said, there we go. <laughs> Thank you, Cynthia. Appreciate that. Boil it down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this, 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 this oh. you are full of shit. It's terrible. <laughs> just like, just, I don't know how else to say it, but I will say this. I will say thank you. Thank you to our veteran and our new viewers for getting us over 12,000 subscribers. Yay! Yay! <laughs> so if you are watching us now and haven't subscribed on, haven't subscribed yet, rather, get on that. And once you subscribe, like, 
and ring that bell so you always know when a new nonprofits episode premieres every Sunday at 3 p.m. Central. But you already knew that it was every Sunday at 3 p.m. Central because we always come on every Sunday at 3 p.m. Central. And then share the link to our channel with your friends, with your family members, with your coworkers, with your own bigotry duck, that neighbor guy that you like and the neighbor guy that you may not like because he does not have a bigotry duck, yet he is bigoted all the time. So we can go ahead and get the word out that we are there and we can also help with fundraisers. And if you are not, you should be aware of the atheist community of Austin having another YouTube channel. So make sure that you check out the Atheist Experience Network, a channel where you can find all ACA shows in podcast form. Subscribe at tiny.cc slash AEN podcast to listen to episodes of the nonprofits, the flagship show of the ACA, the Atheist Experience, also Truth Wanted, Talk Heathen, and even some of our archive shows so you don't miss a single episode. And with that said, I think that we are going to go to the heart of Texas real oh, quick. Yeah. And Jason, if you wouldn't mind taking us in, poor so, favor. So being from Texas, you know, I guess I got this real gem of an article. Okay, so this is uh, on texastribune.org. Uh, the name of the article is three Texas women are sued for wrongful death after allegedly helping friend obtain abortion medication. Now this is by Eleanor Klibanoff. I hope I didn't uh, slaughter that. And it was uh, written uh, in March, uh, 2023. And this, uh, in the first lawsuit of its kind, since Roe v. Wade was overturned, a husband seeks damages from women who allegedly helped his ex-wife obtain the medications to terminate her pregnancy. It goes on to say that a Texas man is suing three women under the wrongful death statute, alleging that they assisted his ex-wife in terminating her pregnancy. The first such case brought since the state's near total ban on abortion last summer. This is terrifying. Real quick, and I'm going to pass it along. Marcus Silva, the individual, is represented by Jonathan Mitchell, the former Texas Solicitor General and architect of the state's prohibition on abortions after about six weeks of pregnancy, and State Representative Briscoe Cain. The lawsuit is filed in state court in Galveston County, where Silva lives. Um, I'm going to go ahead, and I've got some thoughts on this, but I'm going to go ahead and pass this to Kelly because he seems a little more uh, put together about this than I am. Because I live here. I have to put up with this garbage. I have to listen to it every day on the jobs. So I just, I'm sick of it. So, Kelly, what you got, man? I'm I'm just holding it together, Jason. Yeah, yeah, Trust me. Fucking sick. Um, as soon as I saw the headline in this story, I thought to myself, I am going to be really mad by the time I get to the end of this story. And you mm -hmm. know what? I don't want to brag or anything, but I am no longer a nonprofit because, yes, I saw into the future. <laughs> and sure enough, I was pissed off right by the end by the end of this article. Mm -hmm. First, did anyone get a an ex-husband just out for revenge vibe off of it. Oh yeah, of course. Yeah. I mean, that's what it seemed yeah. like to me. Yeah. And, and it seemed also that it, you, the people that you mentioned that were defending him, it kind of seems like, Hey, we'd like to use your case to make political mm -hmm. points. Yeah. And, and that seems like the whole case in a nutshell to me. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, it has real world ramifications beyond that. And that that's what really bothers me. Uh, one of the other good things that I saw in that headline that you read, that subheadline that you just read, Jason, was ex-wife. And that prefix X is probably the best thing about this whole story. Yep. Seriously, it's probably yep. the best thing. There was only one other good thing I could glean from it. And that was that he was also suing two of her friends. So she apparently had two very close friends that stuck yeah. by her when she was going through a very contentious, painful, horrible divorce. And it, it done me good to see that she at least had people sticking by her that mm -hmm. way like that. Yeah, so, uh, Valiant Heathen, you want to take it from there and tell us what you think? Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, I'm kind of in the same boat as you were. The, the, I was super pissed by the time I finished reading this. Um, <sighs> The idea that someone's personal medical decisions can be legislated at any level is already beyond the pale. And now to have her and her friends be potentially legally liable 
which is the scariest part to me is that mm -hmm. this might actually hold water um, just based on the way the legal system is set up yeah. and the way that the laws are set up around there. And that is yet another example of where we have lawmakers that don't have any experience, don't have any qualifications that are just making laws and legislating people's bodies and legislating people's decisions and in doing so, having to actively ignore testimony from people that are experts mm -hmm. who are telling them this is dangerous. This is going to, you know, thank yeah, God she had yeah. friends like that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, honestly, to be able to help her out in a situation like that, because uh, I don't know if you got that far in the article, but it was quite clear this is a relationship she had been trying to get out of for a while. Mm -hmm. And she knew that this was only going to be another uh, a piece for him to manipulate and use to pull her back in and keep her in the, in the, in a, probably a very unhealthy relationship. And it's, it's sick that, okay. yeah, that this well, kind of a personal decision can be used like this against her. Yeah. Well, as a person who owns a uterus, I am <laughs> quite dismayed when I, I read this article. Um, and I mean, like, luckily I'm not in Texas, um, but I, I, I play a person who goes to their, I go, I play one on TV, um, mm -hmm. especially being with the ACA, um, bad joke. But anyway, <laughs> I, um, I, I did read this and, and I, I kind of wish that we had like some of our legal eagles um, with us here uh, just to kind of go over the law and maybe ask, answer a few questions. Because like one of the questions that I had, and, and maybe you guys want to, you know, try to give your takes on this, is that is it possible to pin the wrongful death on her and her friends or on her friends specifically just because they helped her secure the pill that she wanted? Uh, Kelly, you want to let's just go down the line and 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 see what everyone has to uh, has thoughts, you yeah. know, to um, give their thoughts on that. Unfortunately, I think that the way the law is in Texas, that this is a distinct possibility, not on a criminal level, but on the civil level. And mm -hmm. I believe that this is going through the civil courts. So, yeah, um, yeah I I don't have good ideas about it. I I think we can all agree that Texas is totally misguided and wrong on this. Yeah. But I honestly worry yeah. about the current condition of our courts throughout the country because they seem to be driven more on ideology than the law nowadays. That yeah. I, the religious right has done a very good job of getting people that they wanted on the courts, especially in the last two or three decades. Yeah, and it's really it's really coming back to haunt us now. Um, I think it is a really legitimate concern because it has gotten so bad, and. Here it is. This is the point where I, where I go to almost every week. If you want to make the world a better place, you have to be the change that you want to see. You've got to go out and do it. Even if it's just one or two hours a week, go out and stop these people. We've got to yeah. work and stop these people from taking over our court system, yep. from taking over our country, from taking over our lives. It doesn't take very much. And I say it all the time. Every little candle lights a dark corner of the world. Be the little candle. Yeah. Jason? And, well, you know, we, we had a chance recently to vote Abbott out. And out of, I think it was 17 million eligible voters, we had less than half register. And out of that, he only beat Beto by maybe a million. So when I when I think of that, and I, and I look at that, and my, you know, I proudly say I voted for against Abbott, just straight D the whole way down. So did my partner. And it, it, it just sickens me because this guy is targeting not just people with uteruses because this, this extends beyond that. This extends to people of color. This, ex, this is a classist, uh, poverty focused, single parent focused person of color, person of, of, uh, low means and low uh, that are generally dependent on, I mean, it, it it's such a, a disgusting thing that doesn't just affect, uh, cis het women. You see what I'm saying? It, it, it is an overarching grab that, that holds more people down because what, what you're doing is you're putting more financial stress and more strain on people by forcing them to either have these children, to go through all the medical stuff that they have to go through. I mean, it, it's just a disgusting thing. And the thing that terrifies me is that if this son of a bitch wins, then that's going to set a precedent. 
And that somehow we're going to be able to start taking, I'm going to be able to have some form of ownership over somebody else's body. And, and here's the thing. We don't know how she got pregnant. He could have told her he was using protection and took it off. He could have done said, I'm going to do the old pullout method. And we know a lot of times that doesn't happen. He could have raped her. I mean, these are things that happen. There's a reason she's an ex-wife, right? And I know countless stories. It does, it's not even anecdotal at this point. We, we, have, we have information on this, on how often this happens. We have information on how often females uh, have uh, attempts of sexual assaults against them. And it's, it's really, and how many times people get pregnant off of that, then the, the necessity to terminate those pregnancies and, and the outcomes that we get if we're not, if those things are not accessible. Again, it seems like the theme of the, the, the night is, is, or the day, you know, it's 3 PM, right. Uh, central, um, is that we have people who have control over the majority of the world and the information that they are using is anti-well-being, anti-science, anti-empiricism, and yet they're allowed to steer the fucking boat. I don't know. VH, how do you feel about this, man? Uh, yeah, no, I 100% agree. Uh, if you watch any of those, uh, before they actually pass this kind of legislation, I've seen many um, uh, of those kind of hearings where they will bring in doctors, they'll bring in mm -hmm. uh, uh, uh gynecologists and just specialists in all these kind of fields who know what they're talking about and they will acknowledge when they're told to their face flat out this is a bad idea this is going to mm -hmm. kill people this is not um where all the evidence leads and they will say you know thank you for your testimony etc and then two minutes later vote to pass that bill um as far as uh what cynthia was asking uh, with this pill i i don't know i think it really is going to kind of depend on how good the lawyer is yeah. Is the lawyer going to be able to argue that providing the pill isn't, they didn't force her to take it. They simply provided it to her. Um, I, I guess, are they, are they going to be able to argue that that is, is uh, assisting with an abortion? That's, or is that just, that's the problem that the law in Texas is worded so that they can get her for assisting. That's the terrible. Problem. Yeah. yeah. It's like driving yeah, well, the timing of all of this, yeah. the timing of all of this with this lawsuit and, and the divorce and the day she got pregnant and the overturning of Roe v. Wade was just kind of a boop, 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 boop. Mm -hmm. Look at the yeah. actors. Look at the guy who's representing them. I mean, that he has stock in the game. And that's that's disgusting to me. That's that should be a conflict. of interest. I don't know. To me, that's a conflict of interest. I mean, that's well, he's not the judge. So, well, I mean, who's this? Come on, but man. I mean, the way you're the way you've ordered it, though, then everybody would have a conflict of interest. Yeah, court, you're right. right. I mean, so, but yeah. he had a part to do with this. Like he had a say in writing these laws. And now he's the one. I, you're right. I mean, he's not the judge, but I, I don't know. I just I guess living I, here. I'm on your side. Yeah, I'm I know you are. Yeah. I, I think the guy's a piece of shit and a scumbag. I'm on yeah. your side. But yeah, yeah, you're right. I mean, well, that's the thing. Yeah. Well, just to kind of uh, tie back to what you were talking about, especially when we were discussing trigger laws, um, the article did bring up the legality of abortion in Texas in July 2022 is murky. The state's trigger law, which makes performing abortion a crime punishable by up to life in prison, did not go in effect until August of 2022. But conservative state leaders, including Kane and Attorney General Ken Paxton, remember him, mm -hmm. have claimed that the state's pre-row abortion bans, which punishes anyone who performs or furnishes the means for an abortion um, by up to five years in prison, went back into effect the day Roe v. Wade was overturned in oh. June, and and I I don't know I'm I'm a little I'm I'm a little skeptical about that only because Roe v. Wade just basically removed the um the federal protection mm -hmm. for a person to choose whether they were going to have an abortion or not. It did not effectively ab ban abortions. It was yep. gave, basically giving the states the um the power to choose whether they want to have some type of regulation um that's further stringent or not 
in their states. So I, I um, even though that I am not a lawyer, I am a bit um, leery of some of their mm -hmm. um, justifications on why this particular suit should go into effect. I, I know that like there were, I remember we first covered that whole law um, last year mm -hmm. that um, we discussed that there were um, other lawyers in Texas specifically that were pushing for there to be a stay on um, that, uh, that wrongful death long, uh, lawsuits um, for a person to even seemingly try to help a person obtain an abortion um, because they said that this could have like ramifications but out of uh, out of pocket, out of reach. Um, like for for example, if you had an Uber person drive mm -hmm. um, um, a pregnant person to the train so that they can go to a neighboring state to have an abortion. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, or this to like, you know, um, this, uh, the woman's uh, friends helping her get uh, mailed um, abortion pills or, or any, or, or any of those things. Like, you know, it's, it seemed like that the, uh, the law itself was like overly punitive, but even going back to what we're talking about specifically when it comes to um, uh, the different medical personnel that actually testified in front of uh, Texas Congress when it comes to these laws and it was basically saying that, hey, these laws, if you they go through this bill, if it goes through, it's going to basically kill people. Mm -hmm. And um, and they and provided tons of evidence to support that. Um, I don't know if you guys remember when we did that story on the turnaway study. Um, oh, no. and okay, well, the turnaway study, I'm, I, you know, I, I should have had this in my notes. So yeah, I'm, just to try to, I'm just going to try to roll it off on the top of my head. Um, but, uh, the turnaway study was basically, I want to say that, um, it was a study that was done by the, um, uh, what is it? The Institute that starts with the G. Oh crap. Uh, <laughs> good the institute. institute, right? The, I'm sorry. Say that again. No, I was joking. I was saying the good institute. No, it was, it, was joke. Good institute. it was a good institute, but it starts with a G. I'm sorry. Um, uh, people, um, when you happen to watch this show, uh, put it in the comment section, the, um, the institute that I was uh, discussing or, uh -huh. or trying to remember. Um, but basically the, the turnaway study followed pregnant people for, I believe, five years. And they were basically trying to get a take on how the people who wanted to have access to abortion and couldn't versus people who were able to get abortions and, and basically, you know, how, how the outcome was. And, and they found that people who actually had the choice mm -hmm. of having an abortion actually fared better than those who did not. And, and they put into effect all types of matters. Like I know, uh, Jason, you were talking about um, people who happen to be, um, you know, um, of, of, of a minority group, mm -hmm. uh, like say for instance, like I know um, uh, black women um, and also maybe Latina women mm -hmm. and um, Asian women, et cetera, et cetera. Um, or any, any or, or rather what I say, like people who actually have uteruses because yep. it's not just women per se that are able to be or capable of becoming pregnant. Mm -hmm. um, but but I, I would definitely say, just according to the data, that you know the um, the group that happens to have um, the most abortions are you know, are black women mm -hmm. specifically. Yep. And and um, but and also I believe the turnaway study even like showed this is that the main driver for a person to actually be actually choose to have an abortion is not that they're trying to use abortion as a contraceptive is because they yep. can't afford children you know and I, I believe that this speaks um it speaks deeper to not necessarily having a social um a, a social net uh, a social net or safety net rather, in order for any of these things to happen. I, I remember when I was on another show, uh, one of the hosts or our panelists actually said that, you know, if if you want, if if the government wants uh, people to have children, they need to pay them. 
because like <laughs> if yeah, I, and I, yeah. I, I know this for um for even my own experience that it's very difficult to try to um uh try to raise a child and also work a full-time job. I'm working from home. And you know, I I have a, a almost two year old with me who loves to run into my room while I'm working, mm-hmm. <laughs> wants hugs and kisses and food and 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 just attention. Um, and I would love to just stop what I'm doing, but of course I have to make a living. Mm-hmm. You know, it, it would be nice if like I could have taken off maybe five years of my life just to <laughs> divorce devote specifically to him. Um, but you know, that's not the reality. And I think, and that's, that's something that a lot of people with uteruses actually face. Mm -hmm. Um, even like you have, like, um, I believe that the last statistic that I read is that like you, um, over one, uh, 1 million black women who are, who are single mothers also live at or below the federal poverty line. Yep. So, and most people who happen to, who have a, um, um, who happen to, um, have a, um, an abortion already have children. So it's, um, it's all these different things that I, um, that unfortunately um, brings up uh, detriments that uh, tax, Texas never uh, gave um, into, um, never, never gave credence to, because one of the things that they also didn't do was um, increase access to social security, yep. increase access to um, to other social programs mm-hmm. in order for people to afford children. Yep. So I, I, I'm i sorry, I, I was on my soapbox <laughs> for a very, very long time. It's like, and another thing, a valiant <laughs> even, why don't you go ahead and jump in? <laughs> Well, I'm going to just tack on there that uh, that among many other issues, that is one of the reasons that I've decided that children is just not in the cards for me. Yep. Mm-hmm. Uh, I yep. just can't afford it. <laughs> I, I had a vasectomy after my first and uh, the first was planned. And then I said, you know what, instead of somebody having to take medicine that can harm them or or have any risk, I'm like, you know, the, the worst thing was the hangover after uh, the procedure. Right. You know, yeah. and that's one of Bloody Mary's, you know, yeah. so as soon as Roe v. Wade got slashed, I was like. My man. Oh, not taking that risk. Yep. See, that's the way to do it. <laughs> Take yourself out of the gene pool. Just do exactly. a good job exactly. and do, do the right thing. I mean, it's it's a lot easier for guys. I mean, it, or I say for, for cis males, you know, it's a lot easier uh, to just done, you know? Mm-hmm. There exactly. You go. My brother's got my bloodline covered. We're good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I just wanted to, 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 to roll it back just a little bit to what you were saying earlier, Jason. Something about the, the eligible voters you said about 8 million out of 17 million voters voted yeah. in Texas in the last election. And I just yeah. wanted to say the right has done a fantastic job of disenfranchising voters. Oh, oh yeah. Oh yeah. It's oh, a yeah. huge part of that. I mean, we had, I mean, it, it disgusted me. We had an opportunity and beta, I mean, and we, it, we barely, I mean, it, it wasn't, doesn't it's 4 million versus like four and a half million versus three and a half million. It wasn't mm-hmm. that big of a margin. And if more of the people I know personally, would have fucking voted, then that guy would be gone. And you start, you chop off the head of the beast, man, and everybody follows. And that's the thing that irritates me is that we, we have these opportunities to do this and we just didn't. It's a million people in Texas is not that much. I live in Houston. There's, <laughs> there's a lot of people here, you know, Dallas, Austin, El Paso. We have cities with millions and millions if you know one city had really just gotten motivated, we could have done this. But before we run out of time for this segment, I do want to mention another related thing that's happening in the courts right now down in Texas. It's not in the state court; it's in a federal court, and they're deciding whether or not to require the FDA to ban or restrict the medication abortion drug mefepristone, which is the the pill that this woman is in court for right now. Jesus. So even in states where abortion remains completely legal, this case would take effect. Now, this drug has already been approved by the FDA. Mm-hmm. It's been used for years. And if this goes through, it will be banned in states that have overwhelmingly supported a woman's right to choose, states like California, New York, Illinois. And we really need to keep an eye on that story as well, because it, I think that's probably even more important than the one we're talking about. Yeah, uh, the, the people uh, in I power. Mention it before we moved on. No, mm-hmm. thank you. The, the people in power do not represent the people. We are a minority majority state. 
Mm-hmm. We, we have more people of color in Houston than we do people who look like me. You know, it, it's, we have, they don't represent the classes. They don't represent the people. They don't represent the demographics. They, they, are, uh, they are a legitimate troublesome minority that needs to go. And, and I'm disgusted with the, what we're doing. And I'm sorry for everybody and everything. I, I, I appreciate that, Jason. I'm just want to uh, just uh, just shout out to our uh, our lovely crew who um, actually uh, brought up this information for me. The Turnaway Study is an A N S I R H perspective longitudinal study examining the effects of unwanted pregnancy. So yeah. that's what that is. And um, and um, and I uh, hold on before I say this. Um, the uh, uh uh never mind i'll bring it up before i was trying to remember the institute that starts with a g but i'm going to give the final word to valiant heathen before we move on i just i can't i really can't with this <laughs> <laughs> this is, it's, it's, it's one of those things that once I start thinking about it, the more it starts, it, 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 it domino effects into so many other parts. Like we started getting into a little bit, how it kind of uh, dominoes into the rest of our, into the rest of our society and just how woefully unprepared we are to, to, to support our own people and, and how we have such a vocal minority that we continue to allow to, to, to seize power and, and make decisions that have nothing to do with facts. Yeah. You know, I, I, I hear that. Um, so let us go ahead and take a small, well, no, let's not take a break. Yes, we're going to take a break because I have an announcement. And that is, if you can arrange to be in the Austin area between sun, uh, actually on Sunday, April 24th, consider joining us in the studio audience at the ACA Free Thought Library for a live broadcast of Talk Heathen and the Atheist Experience. Doors open at noon on Sunday, and parking is where you can find it, you know, a legal spot that is, Hmm. after the lot is full. And if you can't make it there this month, we will continue to broadcast live from the library last week of each month actually at last Sunday of each month. So keep watching this show, the flagship show of the ACA, and also our website at atheist-community.org for news and information as we expand our in-studio offerings for the near future. And with that being said, we're gonna go ahead and move on to our third segment. Um, I believe this is going to be, oh, Valiant Heathen, I believe that you're going to go ahead and take us into this. I will. This story comes to us from AP News, uh, published on March 10th by Jeffrey Collins. We have a ninth grader who sued over the Pledge of Allegiance and a confrontation uh, regarding that. So what we have is a 15-year-old girl who was quietly walking to class and decided that instead of stopping what she was doing um, while the pledge was playing over the loudspeakers and uh, along with a moment of silence she decided she was going to continue on her way to class and she was violently confronted by a teacher uh, and pushed up against a wall Uh, she was then taken into the principal's office and she and her parents are now suing the school and uh, in my opinion that is this rightfully so yeah Uh, First thing that stuck out to me here was the assault. Um, But uh, yeah, let's let's go over to Cynthia. What did you have to say, Cynthia? You know, I was so upset when I read this article. I I mean, I I used to teach uh, in a part of my life, and um, I can't even imagine how. Putting your hands on a student. Yeah, that's, come on. I mean, what the fuck? Yes. Putting your hands on a student. What? In order in order to make your point. I, I understand that, you know, the article did mention that 
a state law passed uh, more than 30 years ago that requires public student or uh, public schools to play the Pledge of Allegiance at a specific time every day. Uh, but that law only prohibits punishing anyone who refuses to recite the. But that law does not. Um, I'm sorry, it actually prohibits punishing anyone who refuses to recite the pledge for as long as they don't, as long as they don't um, disrupt any of the uh, the playing of it or any other uh, pe persons actually reciting it. So, and that's exactly what she didn't do. She just walked into the class silently. She wasn't bugging nobody. She, you know, the, the whole thing. And, and it kind of reminded me, um, and I'm pretty sure that um, you all who came from uh, uh, back in the day church mm -hmm. um, that uh, according, you know, certain segments of the actual uh, service was um, a request for you not to move, you know? So like, this is the part of uh, like, say for instance, like when I grew up of Anglican, um, we were requested not to leave the sanctuary when the gospel was being read and also we were requested for us not to leave the sanctuary and move when the Gloria was being sung. And for all of you all who don't know what that is, don't worry about that. It doesn't <laughs> matter. Um, <laughs> but, you know, but I think that this is also something that um, that this particular uh, teacher was to me seemed like that they were trying to put the um the reciting of the Pledge of Allegiance in the same mm -hmm. uh, boat as uh, something that is like sacred and holy, and you have to steal yourself yep. Yep. in order for this to actually happen. And I'm like, and, and you know, I and I remember even being in Catholic school growing up that we, you know, did the Pledge of Allegiance, and 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 I can think of people who may be atheist, agnostic, who may be questioning, skeptics, of like you know, maybe not want to say under God in, in yep. indivisible with liberty and justice for all, you know, I, I mean, like, because it may go against their principles. And if this is supposed to be a, um, a, a nation, um, as I believe Jane Elliott said, it's not a melting pot, it's a salad bowl. And we should all be able to keep our own individual uh, thoughts yep. and also our cultures, and and they should be celebrated. That um, if if you happen to fall outside of this particular saying, then you shouldn't have to, sorry, fucking say it. And yep. um, <laughs> and I, I'm uh, again, I'm off my soapbox, Jason. <laughs> no, it's okay. My my daughter, I remember she came home a couple years ago, and she's like, Dad, I go, what? She goes. Do you, do you know what the Pledge of Allegiance says? I go, yeah. She goes, one nation under God. I go, yeah. She goes, do I have to say that? I said, no, not at all. And she goes, I don't want to pledge my allegiance to a flag or a, she's very literal, you know? And she's, I don't want to, I don't know these people. What pledge my allegiance? What does that mean? I go, well, like you have, you, they, they now own you more or less. Like my body is yours now. My life is yours now. And she's like, no. I don't want to do that. I go, cool. Then you don't have to stand up. And, uh, then she said, uh, um, she, she said, well, what if my, what if the teacher says something? I go, well then tell him to call me. So, uh, interestingly enough, the teachers never said anything, but her fellow students would tell her, you have to stand up. She goes, I don't stand up. Mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't want to stand up. I'm just going to sit here. I, I think what, what you said really s stands out. It's what this was, was an ideological collision where, 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 where it, it was a, it was a, it was like, like you said, something holy, something that was like the, the most important thing in the world to this person that that child sit there in like pure and total reverence. And by them not doing that, they needed to be punished. And this is very, very representative of of you look at studies of people who are fundamentalists, uh, they, they follow fundamentalist religions. They're all, they're pro death penalty. They're pro punitive, uh, uh, justice, just punitive justice, whatever you want to call that. Mm -hmm. And it was, it's just disgusting, you know? So I, I, I don't know, uh, Cynthia, how do, how do you feel about what I just said? Duh. <laughs> I, I, I feel that, um, I hope that she gets some money. Uh, as as Rihanna said in the Super Bowl, 
um, while everybody on TikTok is trying to do that dance. You know, I am, (laughs) I, yeah, I just, I just just think that it's, you know, it it should never be a a point where a, a teacher specifically, I think that's where I'm stuck at. I, it should never be a teacher that is actually imposing yeah. their will on a child, um, especially when it comes to this particular um, ideology of the the Pledge of Allegiance or anything that has to do with patriotism or or religious belief. I I, I believe that um, I get so annoyed when, um, especially at a public school where those separations of of church and state or religion and government or the like are constantly being um uh, being blurred mm-hmm. and yeah, that's um a big and problem. yeah it's and, and the thing about it is is that you know you come to school to learn you you come to basically go through your different subjects your math your science your your english your your uh, second language, your third language, et cetera, et cetera. And, um, and banned, if you want to do that yeah. too. And, and, you know, mm-hmm. and, 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 and so that you can go ahead and have like a, a, a point where you are going to um, have an education that can take you to the next level in your life. And you don't need uh, any type of patronism, uh, patriotism, 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 or 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 religious um um belief leaning or anything like that to do it. I you know you you need your book learning and and call yeah. it a day. I, some interaction with some kids, maybe maybe yeah. some arguments, you know, yeah, y- like, yelling at each other and some drama. You need some yeah, drama. Yeah, exactly. Man. Like well, you know, back in the day we would call that debate club. And oh, then, you no, know. <laughs> no. Now it's called being messy. <laughs> yeah. yeah, this is true, you know, but I, I mean, but like that's that's what, you know, school is supposed to be, especially like a public school. Yeah. You know, I don't know how many times we talked about even um uh, public schools like allowing to open their um uh their uh their schools on in order for them to have like uh um uh, what are, uh, like prayer meetings Come um on. uh after you know after school or even making uh kids say prayer um in in classes before they start their lessons mm-hmm. and again this is a public school or 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 we had that one study uh one story where um they were actually holding revivals and inviting the students <laughs> during school hours no no <laughs> to actually participate i was like no. w t f oh my-, <laughs> my daughter just got outed as a uh, as an atheist mm-hmm. and we're talking the uh, past couple of weeks in fifth grade mm-hmm. and it, it has been a thing and she got outed uh she came out as being lesbian recently Got her first little girlfriend, really happy about it. And I, I I am really happy with my daughter's teacher, her homeroom teacher and how she's been handling this. I'm extremely unhappy with the counselor um, because through the communication, they wouldn't recognize what I was saying, what I was asking. Just, they're all so touchy about these things. Sorry, Heathen, I, you look like you wanted to say something, man. Go Go ahead and jump in. I was trying to figure out if I'm, am I muted? You're good now. Yeah. I think you might have been muted. For a second. <laughs> Come on, jump on in, man. No, I, was yeah. just, I was just really surprised that like that kind of a revival thing didn't go on at my, uh, my school. I'm, oh. a, I'm, a, mm-hmm. I'm a veteran of like the good news club after, after school and the oh, no. national day of prayer around the flagpole and all yeah. that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, and just the, the whole cult like activity of the pledge of allegiance that, you know, wherever you're at, you stand, you face the nearest, you know, hand over mm-hmm. the heart, all that kind of thing. Um, Cause I came from a very, very, very conservative part. Uh, of the country, um, specifically even in upstate, a lot of conservative areas. Um, and we had a, uh, actually a couple of Jehovah's Witnesses, uh, like a family of Jehovah's Witnesses in our, in our community. And they didn't stand for the pledge. They didn't yeah. participate in the pledge. And it wasn't even a big deal back then mm-hmm. uh, here. So I'm not quite sure we're here. We are 15, 20 years later. And, and now this is happening. This is ridiculous. I mean, but look at who was president. I mean, never mind. We can't talk. Look, look. <sighs> Just look at the political climate and look at what is being allowed and look at what we are saying is okay to be fucking said. Look at what we've been doing. Look at, look at all the stories we've been doing now. I mean, this is, we have the Pope, which is supposed to be the mouthpiece 
of the biggest land ownership corporation in the world, but you know, and God apparently too, and anti-science harm. Look at the story after that in my great state, anti-science harm. And here we have somebody whose prescriptive ideological obsessiveness thinks that there makes them allowed to touch a child and to actually physically assault them and feel not only justified in it, but I, I mean, think it's like a, a moral thing. Like you're not only just, you're doing a good. It's not even a, a neutral. It's like you did a good. I feel like I did a good. No, this is this is disgusting. And 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 that person, not only should their job be taken, any type of they should not be allowed to work in any other public school system. They they, they should be made an example of because exactly. that, that's disgusting. Because if they're not made an example of. Another fucking precedent, another fucking precedent, another precedent. Mm -hmm. So, no, I, I think I think it's disgusting. Cynthia, how do you feel about that? Well, you know, the um, the family actually contacted the school and spoke with the principal about what happened. And um, the principal was like, OK, thanks for letting me know. And then, you know, kind of did nothing. And this is no, the course. reason why we're having like the lawsuit happen yeah. in the first place. And, you know, we also know, according to the, uh, that, according to the article itself, that that particular teacher is still at the school. They Disgusting. have not been dismissed. They have not been sat down. They, no. None of that. And, and I mean, like, if, even if you are okay with the, um, this whole issue with um, the, the kid, actually um uh being chastised per se for not um for not uh actually saying the the pledge does that give that teacher the right to cause them harm no of course not of course of course not you you are not justified in assaulting somebody yeah. Unless, unless your life is at risk. So apparently that kid was chilling, minding their own business. They didn't attack the teacher. They didn't have a bomb, a weapon, uh, you know, ninja stars or a sword or anything. I mean, so, I mean, they weren't yelling obscenities or, 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 or disrupting other people's pledge or prayer or whatever they were doing at that time. They're just walking, man. And and, 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 and just, yeah, not reaching yeah. that level of patriotism that that teacher was expecting. Apparently. That's, disgusting it's disgusting mm. yeah i you know i i did want to get like some final thoughts before we move on into our last segment um first uh valley and heathen um because basically me and jason hogged the whole conversation <laughs> sorry. I'm sorry i'm sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> it, it happens uh i would like to give you and then kelly the last thoughts for this particular segment please sure i i think this is definitely um this is definitely a symptom of, of what's been happening, like we were talking about a little bit with the changing of the country and the way that the political climate is, and just like the, uh, uh, the injection of required patriotism in our schools and almost, almost in an indoctrination style. Mm -hmm. You know, America's the best country on the planet. We, you know, blah, 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 blah. You got to love our country, you know, love the country, pledge your allegiance to the country, uh, all the way down to letting military recruiters come into high schools and, and teach middle school and elementary, you know, all the way up teaching middle schools, middle schoolers and high schoolers that the next best thing they can do with their life if they can't get into the college that they want is to come into the military and, you know, serve your country. Indeed. Kelly, you have any thoughts about that? Yeah, you're muted, honey. You're yeah, muted, yeah, here you go. <laughs> And you you sound a little further back. I sound a little further back. Now you're now there. You're we go. Now you're close. Now you're close. Sorry yeah. about that. Oh, like, we had an ice storm and I lost power for a few. Minutes. I was just sitting here completely in the dark. Oh no. Um, I don't know what you guys said about this, but I do have a couple of things to say real quick before we move on. First off, I don't think it's ever right for a teacher to touch a child, mm -hmm. and I think this is indicative of a part of our culture that fortunately we're moving on from that it's okay to do violence to children, to mm -hmm. teach them a lesson. Um, it's a weird mentality. It's one that we need to stop. I was physically abused as a child 
from that type of mentality. And I was able to break that cycle. I never once hit either one of my children. They turned out to be freaking awesome. Mm -hmm. I think everybody can do it. So let's try to stop that whole mentality in our society and move on from it. You don't need to hurt a child or throw them up against a locker just to get them to listen to you. Um, the other thing is I, 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 my ex-wife was a school teacher. She taught in an alternative high school, the one where they send all the kids that have been kicked out of the other schools. Yep. And a lot of the teachers there were, um, had, had a, they had a, a mentality that these children were broken and they needed to beat them back in the shape, sort of like emotionally and mentally, not physically. Yeah. And there was one kid who did not want to stand up for the pledge. He did legally. He didn't have to. They made him go out and stand in the hallway by himself while the class was doing it no. because of the type of school it was. He was not allowed to be in the hallway by himself. So they had a security officer who was also a policeman come and stand with him who would verbally berate him through the whole process. All the time that he was in there out in the hallway, he was being told what a piece of crap he was because he wouldn't do the Pledge of Allegiance. And I think we need to make sure that we don't have people like that or with the same mentality of that pushing the kids up against mm -hmm. the locker because yeah. they because of their patriotic ideology. They yep. shouldn't be putting that on the students. That's my two thoughts. So thanks for letting me get it in there. <laughs> and, and thank you, Kelly. Uh, if anything, I would say that that Pope Frankie is ideological colonization. Yep. Yes. There you go. <sighs> yes. Thank you. Thank you, Cynthia. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so before we go ahead and move on to our last segment, uh, just I uh, just want to tell the people that you too can become a member of the channel for as little as 99 cents per month. So click on the join button below the video. This will give you access to special chat emojis. And also we have merch, 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 merch. So please visit tiny.cc slash merch ACA that's tiny.cc slash merch ACA to get your favorite items like t-shirts, hoodies, and coffee mugs. You can also get the new bigotry duck <laughs> t-shirt that both Kelly and I are rocking right now and um and and also other items that we feature once a <laughs> month there you go yes there you go i i would turn around too but i'm kind of stuck in my corner um <laughs> so uh make sure that you guys go ahead and do that and also note that all aca shows features a special limited edition item each month like i said this is big bigotry duck month so make sure you cop that before it's all gone and also be sure to check out our store for NP merch and merch from all the other shows and with that being said we are going to have a little step in the right direction mm -hmm. step in the right direction yeah step in the right direction we're step 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 in in the right direction yeah and that right direction is our article for segment number four, which is the USS Chancellorville to be renamed after former slave who captured the Confederate ship. This is from the USNI News by Sam Legrone, and it was published on February 27th. 2023. I remember when I actually saw this article, I'm like, you know, I'm going to say this for next week because I'll be. So <laughs> what is this whole thing about? Well, so the U.S. Chancellorville is a naval ship that is in Japan at this particular time. That's where it's actually uh, stationed. And the Chancellorville was actually named after a former um, a Confederate victory. Matter of fact, they even had like Confederate um, mm -hmm. uh, uh, statues and Confederate uh, memorabilia. Um, they even had like, you know, Confederate stuff that was like in like their ward room. I was like, y'all know that the Confederate what Confederacy was a treasonous state. Just saying. But you leave your label ship after it. Oy vey. 
So to correct <laughs> that, <laughs> they decided to go ahead, as far as like the U.S. Naval Navy has decided to go ahead and rename it after Friedman Robert Smalls. And so you may ask, who is Robert Smalls? So I'm going to try to give you a, a, a quick bio, bio about him. I, I've written a lot more, but, you know, he's he's a favorite in, of, of Friedman history of mine. And and actually with, uh, with him, he was born a slave on, on April 5th, 1839 in uh, Beaufort, South Carolina. He was owned by a man named John McKee, and he worked as, um, as in his master's house throughout his youth. And in 1851, he moved to McKee's Charleston home. He was hired out as a waterfront, uh, um, out on the waterfront as a lamplighter, uh, Steve Dorr Foreman, sailmaker, rigger, and sailor, and became an expert on navigator of, an expert navigator rather, of the South Carolina and Georgia coast. So one night on May 13th, 1862, with a black crew Capt, um, captain by Smalls, they hijacked the well-stocked ship, a planter ship that was owned by the South, and they successfully sailed it to Union territory. And then after that, he um, was actually outfitted um, in, in the, in the planter boat was actually outfitted to, as a troop transport and actually helped win the war and piloting both the planter which was re, uh, to, which was reoutfitted to do this um his intimate knowledge of south carolina sea islands to advance the union military campaign in nearly 17 engagements he wow. also um went on to become one of the first black u.s congressmen in South Carolina, and um, and he also not only was he a House of uh, House of Representatives member, he also became a senator. He gave many speeches and actually uh, helped try to push forward a lot of um, things, uh, a lot of initiatives, especially when mm -hmm. it came to voting and rights for the um, newly emancipated freedmen, and um, and also. It is more things I could say about him, but I'm going to shut up now and I'm going to say, hush, Cynthia, can you please pass the microphone <laughs> to <laughs> Valley and Ethan to give your thoughts on this particular article? I am so happy that we are ending on such an uplifting piece because this is a story <laughs> about an amazing guy who did some amazing crap. Like, oh my God, this is awesome. Um, I think it's really important to like back up a little bit and just take a look and kind of examine what the arguments that people are going to have against this. Because the number one thing we always hear is whenever we're re renaming uh, uh, Confederate war memorials or things like that, or whenever we're tearing down statues is, oh, you're tearing apart history. You're tearing apart history. It's not history. Uh, I mean, the Civil War ended in 1865. Most of these uh, memorials and things that were named after them were not named until literally 25, 30 years after, or even later. That's we're right. talking between mm -hmm. 1890 to 1920. Yep. There was mm -hmm. a big 30 years of a lot of those memorials mm -hmm. and another big, big span in 1950 to 1960. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's really important to keep in mind that these were not to memorialize anything, nope. right. really. These were dog whistles for white supremacists, or yep. these were warning shots across the bow for black America. Yep. 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 hundred so percent. To, to see some of this being torn down, to see some of this being like, uh, rightfully changed. So we're honoring people who actually deserve to be honored and memorializing people who did amazing things is really cool. And it's mm -hmm. like Cynthia said, it's a step in the right direction. And I'm really happy to see it. Yep. Uh, what Same. do you have to say, Jason? Man, I mean, of course, I agree with everything everybody's saying. I, I might have, I don't know. I'd like to hear it from y'all. I might have a little bit of a hot take on this. So, we, you know, we have a guy who was very accomplished in a war, right? But then, like Cynthia said, he did a lot of other things too, right? And and maybe I can get one of y'all's takes on this because, you know, I'm I just, just wondering. I, I would like to see something like a museum named after this guy or something like a gorgeous park where people go to like live and enjoy time with their family and stuff. I think it's interesting that, you know, like a war boat is named after somebody or, or something that propagates the imperialistic regime that is our nation. So I, I don't know. I mean, I'm really happy about it, of course, because fuck all that garbage. And I really like how you brought up the push for those things in the fifties and the sixties 
that was like the last struggling grasp of whiteness, you know, whiteness in America. That's whenever people were finally able to start like, oh, the FDA or not the FDA, the, uh, the FFA is racist and, you know, things like that. We started recognizing that stuff. Right. And then the sixties happened and shit started changing. So yes, I, I have to recognize that. I just, I think it would be interesting and maybe I'm wrong. I'd love, I'd love to hear how I'm wrong in this. Uh, I just, I, I don't know. I think it's interesting that, yeah, we recognize this and we recognize his, what he did and how it helped the war effort. But at the same time, maybe we could also name a library after him or something. I, I don't know. Kelly, how do you feel about what I'm saying? Well, I, 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 I kind of agree with you in a lot of that. Um, I was really expecting everybody to really start praising Robert Smalls through all this. And I, I love me some history and I will admit that six years ago, I had no idea who Robert Smalls was. Mm -hmm. um, his story has kind of gotten around a little bit on social media over the last few years. And I thought most people knew who he was today. And I thought you guys were going to praise him a lot. And, and I don't want to be little Robert Smalls because I think he was an amazing character. It's just an amazing character he deserves all the credit he's ever gotten. And in my eyes, I deserve, I think he deserves even more. Like you were saying, Jason, we need to name more stuff out after him. Yeah. Like for real. However, I figured I would give somebody else a little bit of glory today. And I wanted to mention him. So hopefully as we become more and more aware of this part of American history, this man's story will become well-known too. His name was Alexander Augusta. And I'm going to, I know we don't like to do monologues. <laughs> Cynthia got her quick biography in. I'm going to do a quick one too. His parents were free blacks living in Norfolk, Virginia. He grew up, uh, he started working as a barber and he started to teach himself to read, which was illegal for him to do at the time in Virginia, even for a free black man. Eventually he moved to Baltimore because he wanted to study medicine, which was something he couldn't do in Virginia. However, he was rejected by every medical school he applied to because of his color. He ended up bouncing around for a few years, collecting money to further his education. He received a little bit of private schooling, but he ended up in Toronto, Canada, and he finally earned a degree as a medical doctor. He was actually put in charge of a hospital up there. Wow. And when the Civil War broke out, this was a man, he didn't have to run to Canada. He was already there. <laughs> this was a man that came back to the country that had basically rejected him to defend it. Wow. And he became the country's first black army doc doctor, was the highest ranked black officer of the war, was appointed the first black to head a hospital in the United States. He was commissioned a major and initially received less pay than a white private. This was he, what he had to put up with for who he was. He was once beaten by a mob in, in Boston for wearing his officer's uniform. And after all of that, when the war was over, he stayed here, became a civil rights activist and fought against discrimination against blacks on trains and streetcars preceding Rosa Parks by some 80 years. Wow. Despite everything this great man did, he was constantly, constantly denied entry into physicians organizations, including the AMA. He was the first black officer to be buried in Arlington Cemetery. And I think if we're going to name ships after people, we need to name a hospital ship after Alexander Augusta. Yeah. And that's what I, that's, I, I just want people to know that there were other people besides Robert Smalls, the great hero, Robert Smalls, that deserves to be recognized for the great heroes they were too. Yep. And, as, and while we're uh, naming <laughs> hospital ships after people, we ought to name them after Susie King Taylor too. And I used up all my time. So you guys are going to have to go find out who she was. <laughs> Susie King Taylor. She's worth looking up. You know, there's a bunch of, um, of uh, black American heroes that everyone needs to look up. Um, yeah. And, and the reason being, and, and this is some of the reasons why I'm about to get on my soapbox for two seconds, maybe three. Hmm. This is why we're having such, um, and we kind of alluded to this in some of the other segments when we were talking about the climate of, mm -hmm. the, um, of the country on how we want to uh, fight against African-American history, um, you know, and, and all the other... Um, 
and all the other inferences that happens, especially like, you know, DeSantis calling math books that actually talk about racism woke or Texas calling slavery involuntary or at this other places, or even uh, Marjorie Taylor Greene saying that CRT teaches basically lifts black children up and tears white children no, down. come on. And I, I just want to tell all of those people who say those things, fuck you. And <laughs> also, <laughs> and 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 I, as I, I said it before, and I will say it again on this program and others that I've been on, Black history is American history yep. and should be celebrated 365. Yep. And with that being said, make sure that you join our fan social media outlets. You can find most of the nonprofit hosts on the Atheist Community of Discord by going to tiny.cc slash slash ACD Discord and on Facebook at tiny.cc slash FBNP. And if you would like to support the show, you can do so by becoming a Patreon, a patron rather, at tiny.cc slash Patreon NP. And if you find yourself not doing other things, we want to also get your feedback. So make sure that you comment under this particular video. We read all the comments and also email us. And I have recently discovered that people have been emailing me directly, but I keep on missing it on my ACA email. I have quickly rectified that. So I'm going to ask you all, please hold it against my head, not my heart. I know that's my old Christian way of saying that. And also email us. You can go ahead and give us your feedback by telling us what you like and what you don't like. And you can do that by going to nonprofits at atheist-community.org. And also visit the Atheist Community of Austin's official website at atheist-community.org on the latest of what's been happening. And feel free to contact the ACA at tv at atheist-community.org and with that let's go ahead and just get some vi um some final thoughts i'm going to start with our guest host for the week uh valiant heathen what's that tell us poor favor i am just so disappointed in our education system that there are so many because i can guarantee you uh this this guy joseph smalls this guy alexander augusta uh, Susie King Taylor, I guarantee Robert you there Smalls, are hundreds, hundreds. Robert Smalls. <laughs> Robert Smalls, sorry. Yes, yeah, don't worry. <laughs> there are hundreds of other folks with just as amazing stories that we've never heard of because of our whitewash history that we learned. I know more about Stonewall Jackson than all these people who have done amazing, amazing things on the right side of history. And it's, it's, it's just crazy to me. And, um, <sighs> Again, with the people in charge, people that have all these all this power that don't know what they're talking about, that don't even know what CRT is, but anything they don't like is now CRT. It's insane. And can't even define it. No, <laughs> exactly. Can't even define, can't define it. it. <laughs> no. Jason, what are your final thoughts? Well, I mean, if we if we've really highlighted anything in this episode, it's been uh, the power of ideologies irrespective of if they are demonstrated to be true or um, beneficial. And, and I think that is really what drives me. And I think all of us here to keep pushing forward is that the most popular ideas in the world are ones that harm us. And for whatever reason, everybody, I say everybody, the majority in the masses across the world tend to like these things for whatever weird reason. So um, I just, I don't know, I'm just going to keep doing this and keep hanging out with y'all. And hopefully we keep chiseling away at this weird statue that we have to stare at every day. I don't know. Hopefully that says something. Amen to that, brother. Thank you. <laughs> no worries. <laughs> and Kelly, could you round us out? No, uh, Just real quick. Um, like you said, it's not just black history. It's American history. And we should look at it that way. And I, I really believe that to be true. And Cynthia, I always have a blast when I'm working with you. You're always making me make me laugh. You're one of my favorite people to work with. Uh, Valiant, Ethan, it was really great meeting you. I hope we get to do this again. And Jason, I'll see you around. You're yeah, yeah, yeah. buddies. Yeah, Every, we, yeah. We can't stay away from each other. No, so. not at all. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks well, for I, having me again. I appreciate it. Well, I appreciate all of you and 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 definitely Valiant Heathen, thank you so much yeah, for joining us on uh, today's show. I, I really do hope that you come back um, and especially if anything, 
to go ahead and sing us a couple of bars of a non praise and worship song. And <laughs> <laughs> I want to see that. No, no, oh, no. Was that? <laughs> no, no, no. Don't you dare. Don't I you dare. See. Let's go ahead and say <laughs> thank you again for everybody watching today and listening on your podcast platforms. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye. I want to see. Bye-bye. <laughs> <laughs>